I thought I'd just give you the opportunity to see me after six hours straight laminating. I mean, man, there's a serious man smell going on here. So it's not all uh, good fun laminating, <laughs> as much as I've tried to make it as fun as possible. It's definitely uh, some very intricate areas that'll wear you out. And uh, areas like this down here in the skeg, uh, the end of our skeg, and this is where our shaft ultimately is going to uh, exit the boat. Um, you've got to make sure that's really, really strong. And you can do that by multiple layering. And we've got a laminating schedule uh, designed for that particular area. This area here, the shaft will penetrate through the hull here out into the engine bay. Um, you've got to make sure this is perfect. So uh, heavily sanding it, making sure there's void free. We've got uh, a lot of areas in here that we've uh, I've cleaned back to make sure that we get a really good, strong, thick substrate and wrapping it around the box so that I've got um, a flange that joins onto the existing skeg to make sure that it's really, really strong. So a piece like this, um, You'll notice I've cut a tiny little slot in the bottom of it uh, here. Uh, the idea is that we're going to place this in here and then create like a funnel like this at the bottom. So I'll try to show you that in a bit of detail. So these pieces are purposefully cut for this area. Make sure it's all square and all sort of positioned correctly. So you can see this flap here, we've got a perfect join down the bottom here. And then we're gonna so by snipping it here I'm able then to get an overlap and effectively getting 2400 grams of cloth into this area here which is giving me a very very strong point down in here and you won't end up in here with any air bubbles because we're laminating over the top so So you're about to endure about um, oh, two or three minutes of me uh, laminating in this uh, skeg section of the, of the hull. Um, it required uh, two layers of 300, a layer of 1215 quad, another layer of 300, and uh, a further 1215, another 300, 1215, 300, 1215, 300, 1215, and then a further two 300 CSMs to uh, compensate once again for the the lack of foam that I was unable to fit in there. Um, one thing that's pretty, uh, uh, probably not so obvious to you guys watching is how uncomfortable it is working down in this, uh, in this skeg here. You'll notice my foot is jammed in there. Um, it, it is an absolute beast of a position to have to work into because it's so uh, shallow and, and almost uh, V-shaped and, uh, and yeah, it requires a lot of uh, bending, kneeling, crouching, squatting, and, and I apologise for some of the postures you see me in because I know it's not a good look. But uh, I've tried to edit out all the, uh, all the parts where my, my belly was hanging out or my, uh, my undies were, were sort of showing. You know, I know that's pretty trendy for a teenager, but certainly not uh, for a guy of my uh, stature and, uh, and vintage. Uh, you can see me here. I'm back on the, uh, on the starboard side um, rear sugar scoop where I'm just completing the foam core with the 300 CSM. It was followed up by a 600 double bias. Um, working pretty quickly there but you know cutting and tucking in all this cloth is, is very important to get that correct and you'll notice it's a pretty precise um, uh, uh, layup uh, very important that we get this right and uh, because once I get the engine bays physically glued into place then we're going to have uh, we're, we're going to have no access into that area 
Um, people have actually questioned me about the use of the engine bay modules, why I don't just put the, the motors in in situ. Um, the reason, or my reasoning, and I've taken this from Antares who have a, uh, a similar sort of module for their, their engine bay, and, and that is if we ever have an oil spill or transmission fluid or any sort of spill in the engine room, it will be trapped in the actual uh, build of the engine bay module and not go directly into the bilge water which uh, will then obviously be pumped out with the with a uh, with the bilge pumps through the limber hole so that's my thinking and, and ultimately I think that's the best way to go uh, environmentally and and also from a point of view of ma being able to maintain a uh, a clean engine bay is is just vital to uh, to my build um, I know that there's probably some conjecture about that and probably a lot of trains of thought but that's how I feel and uh, you know it's my prerogative <laughs> and uh, and you know I've got the module so I may as well use them and uh, and they're going to make for a very very neat and uh, tidy engine bay so I'm sorry if you find this uh, laminating section a little bit tedious uh, how do you think I felt <laughs> I've spent uh, many many days down in this uh, this engine bay getting this layup correct and you'll notice here that I'm, I'm actually uh, you know it's a very precise um, and painstaking process getting this right. In fact, I don't know how you would ever guarantee uh, void-free um, laminating if you were to vacuum this. You'd have to be incredibly careful laying down your substrates uh, to get this exactly right. So wet laminating for me is the answer. Uh, tedious, but uh, the result has been just uh, nothing short of fantastic. I'm very, very happy with the finish I've got. And uh, yeah, except for all the aches and pains I get from scrambling around and straddling this bloody skeg box, um, yeah, very, very happy with the result. So I hope you enjoyed that bit and uh, hopefully uh, I won't have to uh, burden you with any more of this uh, spraying and wet laminating. So I've just fished out all of these uh, templates that I got when I bought all the mould and uh, it's time to start looking at where things fit to uh, start ordering my foam and uh, and obviously marine plywood for the bulkheads but um, these appear to be bulkhead um, templates. The uh, issue is that they're not really clearly marked as where. Wet. So um, this is the beginnings and because they're made of MDF they're all rotting and, uh, and out of shape but I do have the advantage that my hull is foam core and thicker so I'll be trimming a lot of the edges of these off anyway but uh, yeah good to start seeing it in a little bit better proportion than the day I bought it I'm starting to make a bit of a sense of it all and uh, yeah, luckily there's a few markings on them but not enough to uh, to make a clear judgment as to what goes where Now, as a kid, uh, at Christmas time, we'd always get a massive jigsaw puzzle, and I hated them. I freaking hated them because we'd always lose a piece. You'd work on it for three or four weeks, and then Mum would come in and do the vacuuming, and uh, we'd lose the piece that finished the jigsaw puzzle. Each one of these was for the original solid glass um, Voyager boat that uh, was built. The, the problem I'm going to have is it's going to fit in some areas but not in others because I've increased the width by this much with the foam core as opposed to this much of solid glass. Um, I'm now going to have a, a bit of trimming to do but uh, it's nice to have some of these templates as guides. I'm certainly going to have to work it all out because uh, each one of them, although they're numbered as you can see here, they've got a, uh, you know, they've got a bit of writing on them. Uh, not enough detail to ascertain exactly where they go so I'm going off a couple of sketches and diagrams that came with the plans. Okay, so here's uh, number one. Now, I've worked out that this actually goes just behind, or well, sorry, forward of the uh, the engine bay. And uh, one, so there's obviously it's got starboard side, front, number one. So uh, let's give it a fit and see if it fits. Again, with the climbing. Frig! Okay. 
So, uh, this one here should fit because there's no foam where I'm trying to put it. And, spot on. The only issue I guess is where number two goes. I'm thinking that it's got to go. So we've got uh, one A starboard side. Right there, but it doesn't fit, and I'll show you why. So the reason why these, these templates don't fit is pretty clear. It's uh, the, the original boat was solid glass, just like this. See, you can see how thin that is. Because I've introduced foam core to try to um, minimise weight and, and, and you know get some real strength in this without uh, adding all the 10 more laminates that I'd have to do, 10 more layers, uh, this particular one here doesn't fit. So we're going to have to do some trimming of this bulkhead. Um, that's definitely where it needs to sit is uh, right here against this stair model. You can see there, it's gonna be a little bit of trimming required. And uh, yeah, that should give me a, a perfect fit once I get the uh, other layer of glass here. I'm, I'm just planning out how much foam I'm gonna need. So I'm trying to work out exactly how much I'm gonna need so I don't overbuy. Okay, so I've worked out this one. fits pretty much right here in front of the, uh, the companion way. And then the next one uh, is around about here at about 45, 60. So you can see I'm starting to run into this problem uh, with the foam, but uh, nonetheless, it will be worked out. So going up this, I've got to go, uh, next bulkhead is 1.4 meters forward of that bathroom. So at 4.4 meters of the boat, so we've got 3,000 here. I've waited for six weeks to get a 20 degree day and 60% uh, humidity so uh, I've just laminated this entire hull down here um, with two layers, a 300 and a 600 double bias on the foam so she's down to one layer of 300 left on this entire hull needing to be done but uh, for now yeah it's it's uh, it's been a big day and I'm, uh, oh, I'm a bit sweaty and I'm a bit hot and yeah man it's been a shocker. <laughs> But, you know, the result speaks for itself. Almost perfect laminating. I'm very, very happy. It's hand laminating at its, uh, at its finest when you can knock off a six hour day straight and, uh, and you know, get a result like that where it's clean, no voids, nice and uh, resin sort of saturated, but not too heavy. You know, I'm not overly resin saturated and uh, very, very happy. If you like this episode, uh, give us a like, subscribe down there, you might get my feeds and uh, you know, line up for a little bit more fun on life on the mold. <laughs> Catch you later.